And with that, Mr. Ruffin. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Thank, thank you very much. Well, thank you for that beautiful award. Um, I'm a product of Wichita. My family moved here in 1940, so we've been here a long time. Um, I went through the school system, Riverside, John Marshall, Wichita North, and a couple years here. So all through the, through the system, I'm Wichita. The, uh, we've had a great, a great experience with what we've done in seeing the growth of Wichita. We have over a million square feet of uh, office buildings now here in Wichita. So anyway, I uh, went through the school system. Uh, my first job was, my first real job was in, in Houston, Texas at the W.T. Grant Company. Worked there for a couple of years, I think it was 58, 59. I didn't like it. I called my father and said, I don't like working for somebody else. And, uh, and I don't like working for you because you don't pay anything. <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, well, there's a little convenience store on, on Pawnee called the 11 to 11 market. And um, so he said, I think you can buy it cheap. So I left Houston and bought this place, and it was cheap. I think it was five or $6,000. Borrowed the money from the Hayesville State Bank. And um, it was OK. It was about 1,200 square feet. And then Wichita passed a blue law saying that if you had more than 1,200 square feet, you had to close on Sunday. Well, that fit me to a T, so we were open on Sunday. We were the only store open on Sunday. This is way back then, I think 60. And um, we did a land office business, did great. So we started expanding those convenience stores. Oh, by the way, I used to work from 11 to 11, seven days a week, all the time. And uh, I'd get up in the morning at about 8, go pick up some things, and then open the store. Very, very difficult times. But I opened 12 or 13 of them. And then uh, Tenneco Oil Company came by and said, look, you have a store, store number 13 in uh, Blackwell, Oklahoma. We'd like to put some pumps out there, self-service pumps. It was legal there. And so I okayed it. <laughs> And it was nice, made a lot of money. And so I started putting me in Wichita. Next thing you know, the fire marshal comes in and uh, reads me uh, my rights. <laughs> They're going to arrest me. <laughs> and so uh, I said, um, uh, oh, by the way, I belong to the Grand Club. Now, that means you gave $1,000 to the governor. And he backed off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so then uh, Eugene Coombs was my attorney at the time, and he says, you know, Dillon's has the same problem, and we're going to litigate this. So they litigated it in front of Judge Riddell. Judge Riddell's daughter yeah, was, uh, she went, went to college in uh, Colorado, where she pumped her own gas at a 7 to 11 store. So we won that handily, and we legalized self-service gasoline. 1972, by the way in Kansas. So uh, I was the first. Dillon's followed up. And uh, uh, we started to expand. It was a very profitable business at that time. So we ended up with not 63, but 83 stores. In the end, it took a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of time. And uh, well, of course, we sold some of them. And uh, at, at the uh, very end, we had uh, I think 65 stores, and we we're doing a substantial gasoline business. Uh, some of the designs you see today were originally mine. In fact, I did a tour with Conoco. Uh, Conoco told me that originally that men in suits would not sell, put their own gasoline in, and women certainly wouldn't. And so I, I did a tour with them explaining what I thought that was going to happen. So we started, uh, Total Petroleum had a uh, refinery in a, our Kansas City, Kansas, maybe some of you remember that, and they needed throughput on gasoline, and I had the throughput. 
So they approached me, uh, I think it was 1994, and said, um, uh, we'd like to buy your stores. And of course, I don't like to sell real estate, guys. It's not a good idea. So I leased them. So we leased them. Now at the time, uh, the stores were making about four million a year. And uh, the lease was only for about two point, let's see, it was 2.2 .2 million a year. So I was going to give up $1.8 million a year in revenue. But it was a 20 year lease. And it, was, it, it amounted to about $50 million. And so uh, I decided to do it because I like collecting rent, as you do too. So let me go over here and tell you what happened. Excuse my hip. I fell on a child's toy and broke my hip. <laughs> so I had, uh, can you see over here? We had 64 stores at the time, and we leased them for uh, $50 million over a, over a 20 year span. Triple net, always do triple net if you can. So I'm sure the real estate people know that. And that was uh, 1994 when they we, made, we did that deal. Then, um, um, I heard that there was a, oh, in the meantime, we had purchased Westway from one of, one of you fellows here, I think, uh, and we had accumulated a lot of real estate, strip centers, uh, I bought a lot of property from the RTC, remember the RTC days? Uh, we, bought, uh, we bought Long Beach for 10 million, it's worth 50. We were offered 70 not too long ago. Uh, we bought the million square feet Kensington in Tulsa, which was a, a, a mall. We converted that to offices. Uh, we paid uh, 12 million, and it was on the books for 100. So we started buying properties like that, but, but we bought them because we had cash, and we uh, operated fast. We had, I had my own airplane. We'd fly there and do a deal in 24 hours, where everybody else was just thinking about it. So anyway, I heard that uh, uh, the Crystal Palace in the Bahamas was for sale. It was a ho big hotel casino complex owned by Carnival Cruise Lines. And so uh, I flew to the Bahamas and uh, uh, we cut that deal. Uh, they said they wanted $80 million and if you'd put up 20 million, we'll carry 60. I love seller financing. Always do seller financing if you can. <laughs> so where am I gonna get the $20 million? Well, remember, I have a $50 million tr class A tenant. And so I got, went to Citicorp and they said, oh, you, you, what do you need? And I said, I need $20 million. And they said, we'd give that and more if you wanted. I said, no, that's enough. <laughs> so I took the $20 million, and I bought the Crystal Palace Hotel Casino. I'd never had a casino before. If you have a hotel and you can hook a casino on it, you gotta do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the first month we made $5 million. You know, what the hell is that? And so, that worked out very, very well for us. But I, I got a taste of what, what happens when a Saudi Arabian guy can come in and lose a million dollars at the roulette table, you know. <laughs> and in the Bahamas, gross becomes net. There's no tax. So it's your money. Nice deal. <laughs> okay. Um, we uh, operated that for several years. And then in 1997, I, I heard that the... Frontier Hotel in uh, Las Vegas was for sale. So I flew down and looked at it. Uh, and uh, there are all these strikers on the street. They're just striking the place. They, they, you know, going back and forth, hitting people on the head. You know how that is. So I said, I can't buy it. 
with these strikers. It was the longest strike in American history, six and a half years, culinary union. I said, why? They said, everybody has tried to solve this, and they can't solve it. Uh, the, the government tried to solve it. They had hearings on it. Couldn't figure it out. I said, well, I can't buy it with this strike. Who is the president of the culinary union? And they said, well, it's a, it's a guy by the name of John Wilhelm. I said, I want to meet him. So we met at Caesar's Palace, had a couple of drinks, and um, within two and a half hours, we worked the deal out. I said, what do you need? He said, well, I have all these employees, been out for six and a half years, you have to pay them back, back wages, and you have to give them the seniority, and by the way, we have a $100 million lawsuit against the owner. I said, well, <laughs> let's settle this thing. I'll give you the money. You've got to drop that $100 million lawsuit, but you've got to give me a 20% discount on, on, on the union fees for seven years. He says, you got a deal. We made the deal in two and a half hours. They've been trying for six and a half years to do it, but they kept making the mistake that what, you know, one side loses, the other side wins. That never gets a deal done. You got to have a win-win. And so they were able to, we were able to solve it in two and a half hours. It took the government people six and a half years. They couldn't get it done. I did it. So uh, the lady said, I want $50 million down. I want $165 million. I want $50 million down, and I'll carry the balance. So I said, well, where am I going to get the $50 million? Well, right here in the Bahamas. We had done so well, we had it almost paid off. So we borrowed $50 million over here, and she carried 115. It was at that time it was 8%, which was high today. So it had, it had uh, 18 acres, fee simple, and next to it had uh, 16 acres of lease. Now we didn't buy the lease. Um, so we took the, took the deal on, this, on the 18 acres, and the property was well located right across from Steve Wynn, right next to the mall, well located on the strip. So it was an aging property, had a lot, needed a lot of work to, to be done, and, but it still made money. You, know, you still had that casino thing, the slot machines and all the rest of it. So we operated that for a while, and um, the, the ground in Las Vegas became be more valuable, up, uh, just went crazy. People were paying crazy prices for ground. So I decided the, that I should lease the additional 16 acres so we'd have 34 acres. And so I think we paid her $5 million a year for 100 years. We had a 100-year lease. So, and we used it as parking, and we were chugging along pretty well. In the meantime, all my other assets were doing well. We accumulated a bunch of hotels. I think we have a dozen or so. We have 5,000 rooms. Uh, so, Pat, my brother, he runs five of them. Dr. Ruffin, he's a professor of economics. I think you went here, didn't you, for a while? Yeah. And of course, my daughter runs a Wichita Marriott. Philip runs Harper, Chris runs real estate, and I put him in the Hyatt, <laughs> which is a tough deal. <laughs> makes no money. I was told, I'm not going to say who told me they had six people for every one that they need. It's kind of built for me. I'd never seen anything quite like that before. But we bought it because I put it in pretty good in the port portfolio. And we get to run it at the year 2026. They get to run it. I probably won't be around. In any case, Steve Wynn comes to me and he says, well, I'd like your land. I'm going to put a big bridge across. I'm going to make Wynn City. I said, what will you pay me? He said, I'll give you 10 million shares of my stock. At the time, it's selling for $50. So. I basically don't like paper. So I said, how about cash? 
And he said, no, no, stop. So I let that go. Uh, another guy, uh, Harris, came by, and they said, we'd like this property, and we'll give you $18 million a year for 50 years, whatever that is. Of course, that's Caesars. Well, they went bankrupt eventually, so I'd have lost that money. In any case, I said no. And then a guy out of New York came in and said, um, I'll give you $500 million, and I'll give you $11 million a year for 25 years. And I said, that's not such a bad deal. So I actually signed a contract, put it in the safe, and then we went to Paris. And um, uh, I got to thinking about it. And I don't know if you've been to Paris, but prices are sky high. And I, I called my office, and I said, go in the safe and tear up that contract. I don't want to sell it. I've decided I don't want to sell it. So they did that. And the buyer, of course, went crazy. Everybody said, you're nuts. Uh, but I decided I didn't, didn't want to do it. I didn't really need the money anyway. So uh, it was 2007. 2007, things were just booming. I get this comp call from a company called Elad out of New York. I didn't know who they were, where they owned the Plaza Hotel in New York. Some of you real estate guys might know that. And so um, I said, yeah, come in. And here these guys come in. They're in suits. They look great. They come into my office. I think Shay was with me at the time. Where are you, Bill? Yeah, Shay was with me at the time. We're sitting down there, and they said, we want to buy the Frontier. And of course, you immediately say, it's not for sale, right? It's not for sale. They said, would it be for sale at a billion two hundred million? I said, well, you're close. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I'm really looking for a billion three. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, guys. I don't know what I was thinking. So. And so then uh, uh, so I said, we'll have to think about this. I'm at a billion three, you're at a billion two. Somehow we can compromise that. <laughs> and so we settled on a billion 240. So we closed the deal in July of 07. One billion 240 million, I had no debt. What do you do with the money? Put it in Wichita, <laughs> the Bank of America. Put it in on Friday. They paid me no interest on it. Thank you, Bank of America. <laughs> and, and so what do you do with that money? Now I'm out of business. I've got hotels. I've got real estate. I've got a lot of things. As they mentioned, I had a dairy. I had a bank. I had a lot of things. You know, when you're an entrepreneur, you do a lot of stuff. You do it because that's what you do. So I'm going to be this great investor now in real estate, in uh, investments. I have all this cash. So we decided to play the market, you know, mess with the money. I lost 60 million so fast, you could, can't even believe it. They told me, you know, you know, if you've got a billion two, you can't buy a million dollars worth of this, a million dollars worth of that. You got to buy 50 million here and 30 million here, or you're never going to get invested. So I got fully invested, and they told me that Fannie Mae, Freddie were government backed. I bought a lot of it. Uh, Lehman Brothers bought some of that. You name it, we bought it. Got killed. So I, I didn't like. I didn't like that business. I hired a professional to run my money. So I brought in a real top person. It cost me a fortune, but I did it anyway. And, but I didn't like getting up in the morning and going down and looking at a screen. That's what I did. I looked at a screen, you know, wondering whether this is going to go up or that's going to go up. I didn't even want to go to work, to tell you the truth. So Terry Lanny, who was the ex-chairman of the board of MGM, uh, came to me, we were friends, and said, uh, I hear the Treasure Island is for sale. Well, 08 had hit, and 
it, things were in terrible shape. You know, you maybe couldn't get a bank loan, but I'm sitting with all this cash. So, uh, and oh, by the way, we built, Trump, Donald Trump and I built the Trump Tower. We built 1,300 units. They were all sold. And then when 08 hit, nobody could close. Banks closed down. You couldn't get a loan. Only 300 of, of, of the 1,300 closed. And so those were cash buyers, but we had 1,000 units left. And um, uh, what do you do? So Donald and I talked about it, and um, he called his lawyer, and, and his tax lawyer in uh, Washington, and we talked three ways. And the, the tax lawyer said, why don't you guys, you owe 500 million on this thing, declare bankruptcy. You'll take a 250 million a year piece, and that's taxes, tax loss for you. It's pro probably worth 100 million a year, 100 million each. And Donald says, this is not Atlantic City. This is Las Vegas. It will return. Phil, if you'll put money in, additional money in, so will I. And that's what we did. And of course, it's extremely successful today. So that's, well, anyway, back to the, back to this deal over here. Um, so they said, Treasure Island's for sale. And um, so I called the chairman, Jim Murren, and um, he said, well, I don't make the decision. It's made by Kirk Gregorian. You probably know him. Uh, so Kirk's 92 years old, but he's the, he owns the stock. And so I, I said, uh, well, uh, I will g give you $750 million cash for the Treasure Island. And they, they called Kirk on the phone. Kirk says, no, 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 no. I want more than that. I want, I think, seven or eight, 850. He priced it 850. So I said, no, I'm not going to pay that. So I went back to my office and get a call. Kirk Corian wants to fly in and meet me the next day. Guys, I knew I had a deal. So he flew in and uh, said, um, uh, you're at 850, uh, I'm at 850, you're at seven, uh, so I think I offered 700, see how it was 700. And um, he, I said, well, let's split the difference. I'll give you, I'll give you 750. He says, that's not the difference. <laughs> he says, I want 775. And I said, oh, 775. Like, uh, I'll give you 500 million in cash if you'll carry 275 at 6%. He said, you got a deal. And with Kokorian, his handshake is better than contract. And he says, let's do this deal. If you have any trouble, give me a call. Don't let the lawyers screw it up. He said some other word. <laughs> and, and so that we bought the, bought the Treasure Island, and that's kind of where we are today. Treasure Island is extremely successful. It's done very, very well. We're, in the, we're trying to buy more properties now, and, uh, but the price, prices are sky high. Uh, we're looking at two, two additional properties. Uh, they're just, uh, they're just legalizing uh, gaming in Japan. You may have read that. Largest market in the world. Um, I had lunch with Sheldon Adelson, you know, who owns this most of the stock in the sands, and he says he's willing to, uh, to build a casino there for $15 billion. I said, my God, $15 billion. He said, it, one casino in Tokyo will make $5 billion a year. One casino. So I'm sure MGM's going to try it. Wendell's going to try there. Going to be some Asian people shooting at it. And uh, who knows who else? I don't have $50 billion, so I can't do it. But the, that's where the market is going. You can't even buy a property in Vegas today. They're, so, they're just priced. Uh, we tried to buy the, uh, uh, no, not the Strat, um, Circus Circus, owned by EMGM, may, making $25 million a year. They wanted $475 million for it which is like a 5% return on your money. 
not, it's not very good. So that's kind of where we are today. I have to thank Wichita for giving me my start. All the people that, that, that supported, supported us in the dairy, the bank, uh, the, uh, everything that we had, the gasoline, and uh, that's about it. So if anybody has any questions, I think I've said what I'm going to say. Uh, I want to thank him again for this nice award. You have a question? What do you see as, uh, because of your close relationship with Donald Trump, what do you see coming out of the election? Well, we had, um, Donald and I have had a close relationship for over 20 years. We've been friends. He was best man at my wedding. And uh, uh, so we've done a lot of things together. I know him very well. He's a close, close friend. Um, it was my airplane that he flew to Mexico in. He didn't want to use the Trump airplane, so he used mine. He just calls me up and says, I'm using your airplane. Said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, we were going to Russia for a Miss Universe thing. My wife is the, was, had the franchise for, she no longer has it, for, but for Ukraine, so we would go there. And so I said, since I'm flying over, Donald, you want to fly with me? He said, oh, yeah. So, but my wife said, let's stop in the Ukraine and um, uh, for a couple of days see my parents. Well, Donald's not going to do that. So I said, Don, you can use, I had just bought a new Global and Bombardier, Wichita, Kansas. And so he took my Global to, to Russia to do the pageant. And uh, so he and I are having lunch there with one of the largest investors in, in uh, uh, Russia. And um, he did, does not know Putin. He did not, someone, someone called him from the entertainment office thanking him for bringing, the, bringing it, but it's not Putin. He doesn't, I said, do you know Putin? He said, I don't know him. So all that stuff you hear about this close relationship is BS, you know. And so, um, no, he's been a great friend, very smart businessman. He's picking a great cabinet. He's got this uh, Rex Tillerson, you're gonna love this guy. He's, uh, he's brilliant. You know, Exxon, he's, he had more people than the State Department. You know, he's he, used to operating people, and I think he's putting together a great cabinet. Uh, he, puts, he put Wilbur Ross as commerce, and uh, I think you're gonna be dramatically surprised at what he's gonna do. You know, he, he's already said, I won't pay $4 billion for two airplanes, which, you know, and he found out that they're buying 80 jets for 400 billion, uh, a lot of money. So I think he'll, I think he'll find ways to save money. He's, he's, a, he's a doer. He doesn't sleep. He stays up all night. You know, he works, works hard, and uh, he's going to be a great president. So yeah. Blackjack. I've, I've had real good luck this year. I've only lost a hundred thousand. <laughs> it's like the guy that goes to the racetrack and says, "God, I hope I break even. I can sure use the money." <laughs> Is that about it, guys? We love Wichita. We'll always love Wichita, and uh, uh, my children are here, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna carry on after I'm gone. They all have homes here, families. Thank you very much.